Hi there, it's Sandy Allnock back to color again. And this time we're going to be coloring realistic fruits. The Colorado Craft Company just came out with these brand new stamps. They're really huge, as a lot of their big and bold ones are, but that means they're really great to get into the detail of coloring. And there are four different ones. There's the pears, the avocado, the pineapple, and the lemon. And they have, depending on which one, they'll have flowers with them. They have different sentiments, all different kinds of elements that go with them. And there's two sets of tiles. And before I get going on the rest, I want to show you one way to handle, well, I should say two ways to handle the tiles. They're each in blocks. So you can't cut them, well, you could cut them apart, but you can't stamp them apart if you leave them intact. But this is how they stamp onto a regular A2 size sheet of paper, four and a quarter by five and a half that we use a lot in card making. So they're six by six, they're bigger than the actual card front. And this one is going to have dark grout. So I took the darker marker and put the color in the grout area. I left a little white outline, shadow on the left and bottom, and then filled the rest in very simply with a very pale gray color. You could do this with any colors that you want. And then I went the extra mile because that's how I roll. And I added a little bit of extra shading with an even darker marker. Depending on the importance of these tiles in your layout of your card, you may decide this is overkill. But I'm gonna put the shadows along the bottom side of each tile and the left side, a little more extra shadow where they meet and rounding those corners. And these are going to be background elements in my card, but I wanted to show you how to handle this if you choose to try to make them look like dimensional tiles. This is the larger one that has fewer squares on it. And I'm gonna make white grout on this one. So basically I'm gonna draw in the outer shapes of each one of those squares and put in a little bit of shading all around all four sides of it this time. Instead of leaving the white space around the tile, I'm leaving the white space in the grout and then just softening it with a lighter gray marker this time so that I get that, that overall blending going. So you can do the, the white grout or the dark grout if you wanna put grout in them at all. And I've also done the other one in each one so that I have the light and dark in the big and the small to use on all my cards. And all the pictures of the cards are going to be on the blog, so you can check them all out individually and really get a better look at them. Now for the fruit. Let's start with the pear. And I put down a light yellow first, and you can use the colors that I'm using, or you can just use your own colors, whatever you'd like. I'm going to be using a little bit of color theory in here. So I'm going to talk color theory in a lot of these. And here I've added a little bit of that overall green, but I'm going to throw in some pink because a lot of times you'll get fruit that's got a little bit of ripeness or some of the pears are going to have a little bit of that pinkishness in them and then go over it with the yellow, which makes it a little more orange. So the color that you're going to get when you mix the green and the pink with the yellow is potentially going to be brown. You need to be a little careful of that. If it starts pushing toward feeling too brown, then add some other color to it. Here, I wanted to darken that right-hand side. I just wanted to get it darker, but I didn't want to introduce browns or try to make anything really dark. So I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the pink and the brown are gonna to work together to make a more neutral color because shadows tend to be more neutral. So I'm just going back and forth between the pink and the green and the pink and the green and the yellow and mixing them up until I get to the point where I'm satisfied with what it looks like. And I've got this right, nice round shape now that's got that strong shadow on one side and then along the bottom. You can do the same kinds of color mixing on the top section. I wanted to have the same sort of color feel. So for the stem, instead of getting out of brown, I just went pink, green, pink, green, yellow, pink, green, until it turned into brown. And then had a little bit of those colors in the leaf as well. Added it with some dimensional adhesive onto my card, drew in a really simple shadow behind it, and one card done. Now, when I say one card done, I don't mean this is quick by any means. <laughs> my coloring always takes longer than just really simple stuff, but I think they were worth it 
I don't know about you, but next fruit up is this lemon. And I'm going to be using this time purple for the shadow, which I know flips people out. You're probably like catching your breath right now. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. I'm going over this purple color with the yellow, which brings it back into the family of yellows that I want this to be. And it's going to work great. I'm going to start building up some texture going from the shadow side to the highlight side by just doing basically some little C shapes, almost like little underscore little lines, not polka dots, because if you put polka dots, it's going to look like you've got chicken pox on your fruit. But if I do these little, little C type marks, then it starts to feel a little more like texture. I'm going to go over it a bunch of times though. I'm going to go over the purple with the yellow and then back in with the purple. You can just keep layering these, even just going over the whole thing with a finished yellow and, and just keep changing the color. Now here I'm going in with a bluer purple because it was feeling too warm. I wanted some cool shadows. So I'm using a blue violet instead of a violet this time. And that's going to knock it back so it's gonna feel much more neutral, which is a more realistic shadow color. Again, I'm gonna throw in some colors in the leaf just because they're already in the lemon and it's gonna tie everything together, even if you don't end up seeing much. But look how interesting it is that purple and green, one over top of the other, turn into brown. Isn't that amazing? I can turn it back into green by adding that brighter green that you can see along the outside, but it gives it that more dull, rich color and also makes it darker. And I laid it on its side in the same scene. I'm just using some, uh, some of the Nina cardstock, the Desert Storm, putting a strip of black paper for my the, the little border on the backsplash of the tiles. Next up is the crazy wild pineapple. Now I have never colored a pineapple. I'm not a fan of pineapples. I know some people are really into pineapples. So I had to really look up a pineapple to see what the heck the deal was. So we're gonna look carefully first at just this section of them. I put an orange outline around the whole thing, some yellow at the top of it, and then a, a dark brown shadow at the bottom. Then I added whatever the little stringy pointy things are that come out of them in a lighter brown. And then I'll add just a little teeny tiny tidge of that dark brown at the center of it. Now you can look up a gajillion pictures and get a lot of different colorways to use when you're coloring a, a pineapple like this. But one of the overall things I wanna show you is how to make it look rounded. So I've, I did that same thing to all of the sections and now I'm gonna go in from the outside edges, since I'm gonna fussy cut these out anyway, and I'm just putting in some brown from the outside edges going into the middle. And I'm gonna use a more warm brown, a lighter brown, as the next stage in, so that I'm basically building roundness. I've got the, the outside darker color and the, the next color inside is lighter, and then I'm leaving that highlight in the very center so that the light is just hitting the front part of my pineapple. For these top sections, they have the way they're drawn and the way you'll get in lots of plants, you have a little triangle as the leaf curls out towards you and the point kind of comes down. And I'm going to leave those points white for right now at the beginning. And I'm going to try to, as much as I can, leave those things so I can get a really strong bunch of highlights and shadows in this. It's going to make it look really realistic. I'm going to take two different greens and alternate them as I start coloring in these shadows. The dark one and then the, the second to the dark one and then the dark one and the second to dark. When I'm going back and forth like this I just leave the caps off the markers. It's not going to dry them out too much as long as I keep going. And I'm just going to keep adding those darkest sections on the interior and leaving those points light colored. I've also, as you can tell, colored a little scribble of green outside of the pineapple leaves because again, I'm gonna fussy cut this out and that's gonna save me having to deal with little white edges where my cutting is not perfect because that's gonna be a pain to cut. And yes, it was a pain to cut. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you that I will be honest with you. 
I have heard a rumor that there could be dyes with these. I, at the time that I'm filming this, have not determined if that is going to be the case by the time this video goes live, but I'm doing this a little bit in advance, so I don't know the answer to that question yet, but there will be links to it in the supply list in the doobly-doo on this video, if indeed that is the case. So once I got it all finished, I added a little bit of yellow to those white areas, which started bringing all that back into a more warm kind of a green color. Notice this one does not fit all the way on a card. It's a really big, big, big pineapple, so you can just use parts of it, which is also kind of fun. Next up, the avocado. I had to do avocado research. I don't like avocado. I don't like guacamole. I know I'm like weirdly, what am I, un-American or something? Because everybody loves avocado so much. I'm just not a fan. So I had to look it up and I found out that avocados are not green like I thought they were green. They're actually purple by the time they're ripe. So what I wanted to create was this really rich, dark, green purple kind of avocado. And it takes a lot of layering to do this. You can leave it the way that those first couple colors were before I hit this dark green. You can just make that your avocado be done with it and not put in all this extra effort. I am telling you, I do, I, I go over the top all the time. But I'm gonna blend out the texture that I've created with my really dark green by going in with my next to the dark green and creating more of that texture, just bringing it in from the outside edges toward that center section where my highlight's going to be, just getting successively lighter and lighter and lighter. You can do this with all kinds of fruits. If you're doing an orange, you would do the same thing. Start with your darkest colors on the outside, work your way in, and soften as you go with some of those extra colors and just, just keep going over them to pull the colors in. Now I'm adding purple at this point and it's just a light layer of purple. I'm not making it the main focus of it, but I added just a little bit of extra purple in there to darken the greens and it gave it that overall just a little bit of a green uh, purple flavor to the green avocado because that's what they tend to look like, right? They're kind of a purple green color. I decided to color this other one for you as well, the interior opened avocado, so I can show you a few little things color theory wise as well, using some YG around the outside edge and then filling it in with a yellow. But for the, the center of this, is it called the nut? I did not do enough research to find that out. I think it's called the, well, regardless, whatever this thing is, I'm going to use the same colors that I used on my avocado. I am using greens that were the same colors and purples that I'm using on this part as the other because I'm going to use them both on the same card. So I want them to feel like they go together. And then I put a little bit of yellow in for the highlight before going over the whole thing with my brown color to pull all of it together. And it gave it a nice realistic color frame and also made it match the full avocado that's on the card. So I hope you have a good day. <laughs> nice sentiment, huh? So there's my four cards. Very simple designs for each one, just with the color band of black at the base of all my tiles. If you'd like to see some more with these stamp sets, over on my blog and my YouTube channel, I have got a watercolor and a Copic version of the same kind of really simple card. And I will see you guys later. Links to the doobly-doo to everything, and I will talk to you another time. Thanks. Bye-bye.